Welcome to Colburn's A Serving of Beethoven, Sonatas for Piano and Violin live broadcast. My name is Martin Beaver, and my co-host is Fabio Bidini. As faculty of the Colburn School, it is our pleasure to present to you a Beethoven Piano and Violin Sonata each Thursday at noon. In order to enhance your listening experience each week, we'll provide a brief introduction covering some background and insights from our personal experiences. Before we discuss today's work, I want to take a moment to share that the Violin Sonata series is dedicated to a dear friend and supporter of the Colburn School, Warner Henry. Warner was a respected member of the Board of Trustees, and I speak on behalf of myself and Martin when I thank him for his commitment to the school, its students, artists, faculty, staff, audiences, and partners. His presence and his passion for the performing arts will be missed, but not forgotten. Today we tackle Beethoven's Sonata, Opus 12, number three in E flat major. It's yep. a wonderful piece, wonderful piece. And I, I feel that perhaps this sonata of, of the first three of the, of the Opus 12s uh, is representing already a bit of a turning point in, in his development. Uh, for me, the sonata feels uh, like it's acquiring and, and his writing is acquiring much more breadth and scope. It is a much grander piece mm -hmm. and is, he, I think he is actually exploring things with the piano in itself. I don't know how about the violin, but the piano part is insane. It's <laughs> insanely <laughs> difficult. We have billions of notes that, of course, they make perfect sense because, you know, when you play it in tempo and you play, we play together and everything, it sounds great, everything. Everything is in the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, it's not written very pianistically, so for what concerns the piano part, it's very complicated. I think he's trying to expand his needs of research, what the piano in itself can do. Let's not forget that much later in his life, he writes Opus 106, which is Hammer Clavier Sonata, which is an hymn to anything that the piano can actually do. Yes. And he wrote it for his instrument at that time. And still in our instrument today is almost unplayable. Sure. And so he already started going that direction. And we are only on Sonata number three, Opus 12. It's absolutely fantastic. Maintaining still this kind of gracious uh, character, no? Yes. What do you think? Absolutely. Oh, no, no, I, I completely agree. And of course, the second movement in C major, uh, con, con molta espressione. I just had to check that. Um, con molta espressione. It's, it's just, a, just such a wonderfully expansive and, and lyrical, uh, 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 lyrical work. I mean, I just love, love that, that feeling. I actually love what we do in that second movement because con molta espressione, most of the times it gets misunderstood, the word espressione or espressivo, and all of a sudden you have people that they start playing, playing loud and passionately. In reality, espressivo or con espressione it means meaningful. Yes. It means give me the message, no? Explore really the message and give it to me. It doesn't have to be louder or passionate. And what we are doing is just, we are kind of, that's the feeling that I have when, when I listen to that second mood. We are kind of rising above and we are serving the music in order for the audience to actually completely get absorbed by the piece in itself, no? It's, I, I find it really nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also, how do you feel about the, the, the key area of E-flat? E-flat, it's never meat and it's never really fish. It's always above everything. You can use E-flat major in a, in a way that is light, that is... It brings you behind the horizon, that kind of color, no? And it's behind the horizon, it means... Um, it brings you in a, in a position that you can't really explain, but you see and you understand and you feel things that other kids that can't make you feel like that. Another yes. key that personally I feel like that is D minor. 
Uh -huh. But A flat major for me is even much more descriptive than because it's giving you a much uh, wider spectrum of possibilities. Absolutely. And the, um, the rondo, again, is a kind of a, 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 that classic uh, mixture of early Beethoven of, of, of elegance and, again, that kind of boisterous, ener Absolutely. Uh, energetic. And again, playing. the words allegro molto sometimes gets misunderstood because they say, oh, allegro molto means we need to really play fast. Right. Allegro molto it means very happy. I'm very happy. It means that the character and anything that we are doing, we are enjoying it to the, we need to enjoy it to the most, to, yes. to the utmost possibilities, no? It doesn't have to be, Absolutely. it's not a matter of speed. I do have to say it's, uh, it's uh, uh, other than the obvious advantages of playing with such a fine artist as, as Fabio, I also have instant translations of all the Italian <laughs> markings. Well, I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope you enjoy.